Hey there folks, how you doing today? Hope all is going well for you. Welcome back to the channel. Please bear with any background racket that you might hear throughout this production. We are on location here where life happens and sometimes there's noises that are unavoidable throughout this recording process. And I'm not going to stop just because there's something going on somewhere else. Also, I'll apologize for my voice. Uh, today is Monday, April the 10th. It is the day after Easter. And I spent a great portion of my time over the last few days screaming, crucify him at the top of my lungs. So it's left me a little hoarse. I probably deserve that. Let's move forward. As you can see over here, I have some nifty looking backpack coolers. These are Titan uh, 26 can backpack coolers. I purchased them at Costco, got a really good deal out of them. They were on sale the other day and might be kind of hard to see in the video. There are three of them up here and, and the three of these bags together are soon to contain the contents from our original bug out bag that we built last year. Something that often comes up when you are doing things like putting together a bug out bag is you throughout the process and along the way come up with better ways to reinvent the wheel. And one of the big issues with our previous bug out bag was it's just really too big and too heavy. I can pick it up and carry it. My son can pick it up and carry it, although it's cumbersome for him. But we've come to the determination that it's just really too big and heavy to be practical. Also, the rigging on that load carrying device on the bag has broken with age. You know, it's some kind of nylon plastic that just, it's broken down. The bag is still serviceable. I'm still gonna use it for something else. I think it's gonna be used to keep sleeping bags in in the future, but it just wasn't working the way it was. And as I mentioned before in the other video, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but I'm gonna mention it again here just for clarification. You can't just build a bug out bag and forget about it forever. You have to every once in a while do an inventory, check it out, make sure that it has the items that you really need in it. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of that here today. I'm going to dump the contents of the original bag and I'm gonna resupply that, those contents into these three bags, replacing what needs to be replaced along the way. One thing that I'll be adding to the bags this time is after I built the other bag last year, I purchased these uh, from the readystore.com. Uh, it's a 12 pack of MREs. I think they were something like 11 or $12 a piece at the time, bought them. And I'm gonna divvy them up and put a couple of them into each of these bags, along with uh, checking the current inventory of the stuff that's in there. Also, for those of y'all that watched the video we did the other day with Uncle Elmer on homemade fire starters, you may remember these. We're going to be putting one of these in each of the bags as well. There's people making noise right outside there, so I'm gonna give it just a minute. 12 seconds later. So we'll start the process today by getting the old bag up here, dumping the contents out on the desk, looking through it and seeing if there's anything we need to update or refresh. Then we'll work on getting the contents into the new bags.
So now that we have the bag unpacked, we can start to go through the contents and we can make a determination on what items are still good to go and what items we should look at replacing. This portion of the video is going to be a little bit redundant and kind of slow. I apologize for that, but there's a method to my madness. One thing I would like for you to keep in mind, it's something I kind of try to reason with when I'm deciding what to keep in something like this, is remember this is not about living comfortably for three days. This is about surviving for three days. And while you could survive with less, we want to stack the odds in our favor a little bit. Now that being said, survival uh, has a lot to do with the rule of threes. And what I mean by that is you can go about three minutes without oxygen before your brain starts to shut down. You can go about three hours in adverse conditions before they start to have a physical toll on your body that could cause you harm. You can go about three days without water, and some of us, uh, myself being one of the ones that could probably go longer than most, uh, you can go a considerable amount of time without food. I've, I've heard some people say you can go three weeks without food. I don't think I would want to go that long without food, but with all that being said, uh, let's consider the items that we have in the bag, and let's try to categorize them into items that are non-perishable and items that are perishable. Okay, for starters, shelter. Uh, we have several of these insulated tarps. They're camouflaged on one side and shiny on the other side. I have enough of those along with a regular tarp here to build a makeshift shelter large enough for the five of us to hunker down under for a few days. While plastic will eventually deteriorate, those are items that are going to be good to go for a long time. In addition to the insulated tarp emergency blankets, I also have several of these, which are very high quality emergency mylar blankets. These are the baked potato type, you know, you wrap up in them, you look like a baked potato. These particular ones are green on one side, shiny on the other side, and they're made out of a more tear resistant uh, mylar material. I have one of these for every member of the tribe and I tested one of them extensively last year and it held up quite well so I'm I'm pleased with those. And again those are a more or less non-perishable portion of the bug out bag. I also have a cheap plastic poncho for everybody in the team and I have two or three 55 gallon barrel liners here which can also be used for waterproofing or shelter or ponchos or whatever you may need in that regard. To facilitate making a shelter out of the tarps, I have about 250 or 300 feet of parachute cord here, so we've got that portion covered. Continuing into items that are shelf stable and do not need to be considered for replacement, we have a folding camp shovel here, military style one. I've got a Leatherman and a flashlight in a pouch rigged to the straps of that bag. I'll probably change the batteries in the flashlight this year, but otherwise those items will be good to go as well. I also have one of these little wire camp saws. Those are really fantastic. And I have this collapsible bucket. It's a plastic uh, bucket with a rubber center section that I don't know how big it is, probably about a gallon or maybe a gallon and a half. It's a good size if you needed to haul a little bit of water. And we just checked it out and it seems like it's still in good shape. I also have a roll of duct tape here, a roll of electrical tape, some flagging tape, some zip ties, a mirror, and some camouflage face paint sealed up there. Those are probably still good to go also. And here, dated February 2022, I have a Sawyer Squeeze water filtration system, which while it won't last forever, is also probably still good to go at this point. I have here a sterno metal folding stove. I'm not worried about that. 
and two cans of Sterno fuel to fuel it with. They have not been opened, so I'm sure they are probably still fine. Now these are something that you may want to consider changing out after a few years. However, I just bought these last year and I'm sure they are still fine. You can still hear the liquid in them and they are still factory sealed. So I'm going to say these are probably good to go for four or five years before you would need to worry about replacing them. Here I have a brand new in the bag camp kitchen set. It's a couple of pots and some utensils. It's never been used. It's also good to go. We don't need to worry about that. A conventional coffee percolator. And a family style mess kit. This also has collapsible cups that are made like our bucket. All of those items are going to be good to go for many years without the need of replacement or repair. Now moving on, I've got my weather station flashlight, radio, phone charger combination thing, and I've got a sticker here in the back that says that it had fresh batteries installed February 25th of 2022. Now those are only a little over a year old. However, I will be replacing those batteries before I put it back into the kit. Uh, when it comes to devices such as this that run off of alkaline batteries, those batteries can eventually fail, leak, and destroy your item, even if the batteries haven't lost their charge yet. So I think it's a good rule of thumb just to replace those batteries on an annual basis. Moving on over here, I've got a little black rubber bag camp shower that was put in brand new back in February of last year. It's never been used. I'm sure it is probably still fine. Being as it's a rubber bag, probably eventually it would fail, but at this point in the game, I'm not worried about it. I also have a pair of heavy rubber gloves that are still good to go. Also, for every member of our tribe, I have a t-shirt, two socks, two underwear, and they're sealed up in these uh, food saver bags. Now, one thing to be aware of with that, you know, my t-shirt, socks, and underwear that I put in there last year are probably still good to go. That applies for most of us, but the younger members of the tribe have a tendency to grow annually, so you might want to check every year or so and make sure what you have still fits the smaller members of your group. Okay, moving on from there, I've got a box of tampons and a package of maxi pads. They don't last forever, but they do last a long time. Those will still be okay. We've got a couple of rolls of horse tape. No, no risk of that wearing out anytime soon. Here I've got a bleed stop kit that says that, it's, uh, that it expires in 2027. So we still have four years before you hit the expiration date on that. I would imagine it would probably be good to go beyond that. So I'm not going to worry about replacing the bleed stop kit. So moving on from there to items that we do need to evaluate is I have here uh, several small packages of medication. I've got antihistamines, pain pills, antibiotics, and some prescription medication for all of the tribe members that need it. Now understand uh, medication needs change from one year to the next. So anytime there's a change, you might want to update those items in your bug out bag. I think probably the antihistamines and the pain pills that I have here, as well as this Z-Pack that I have sealed up, are probably still good to go from last year. I will, however, replace these rubber gloves with some fresh ones, just because those are the type of items that do deteriorate with time. Now, moving on to the foodstuffs that we have stored here. Canned goods are great. They last a long time. There's no doubt in my mind that all of these canned goods are probably still good to go. However, I do like to rotate stock on that kind of thing. So these are going to go back into the pantry and I'm going to take some fresher ones and put back in here. I'm also not going to load the bags quite as heavy with canned goods as I did before. Because as I mentioned to you before, I purchased some MREs to supplement these packs with. The MREs are considerably lighter and so therefore will be more suited to transport by human than the canned goods. In addition to the items I've already covered, I also have multiple fire starters, a few Bic lighters, some cash, and in this case it's cash and a Bic lighter. I think that is something that you should have with every member of the tribe. 
Also, I have a package of batteries here dated 2021. I will be replacing those with some fresher ones. Here I have a package of calorie bars. These are probably still good to go forever. It's about like eating sweet sawdust, if you can wrap your mind around that. Another additional item that I acquired to add to the bug out bags, in addition to the uh, MREs, is I picked up some potassium iodide tablets. They're lightweight, they're relatively inexpensive, and given the present circumstances in the world, I don't think it's a bad idea to have those on hand. So now I start the task of organizing these items back into these three smaller bags to make them more convenient and practical to carry for the members of the tribe that carry them. If anything of significant interest comes up along the way, I will bring it to your attention so that you can contemplate uh, how it might affect your situation. In the meantime, for those of you that stuck around and watched this, thanks for watching. I'd sure love to hear what you have to say about it. How often do you reevaluate the contents of your go bag? If you enjoyed our content here today, I'd ask you to hit that like, uh, maybe leave a comment down below, or consider subscribing to help us defeat the anti-2A algorithm that suppresses the content here on this channel. So until next time, take care. God bless.